Tis the season for sharing the indomitable human spirit. She's a wife, mother, and big game hunter. She's also Ms. Wyoming Wheelchair and Ms. Wheelchair USA. Ashley Lundvall was paralyzed from the waist down as the result of an accident she had at age 15. She now leads an active life. She's also an advocate for the disabled. Our producer Steve Costin caught up with Ashley when she spoke about the Americans with Disabilities Act at the University of Wyoming recently. One morning we were getting ready for our big backpack trip and so I headed down to the lower corrals and we had some steers down there that we used um, there on the ranch and there was a hay rack with hay on top of it and my job was to feed the steers. And so I climbed up on the hay rack to get some hay down for the steers to feed them and I grabbed a pitchfork that was lying there and climbed up on the hay rack and was on the very top and I'm actually over six feet tall standing up so I had that height to the top of the hay rack and was up there quite a ways. And I broke open one of the bales of hay and one of the flakes fell off to the side. And so when I leaned over to get that flake of hay, I lost my balance and I started to fall. And the last thing I remember thinking is throw the pitchfork. You don't want to impale yourself. And so I threw the pitchfork, but on the way down I hit my head. And so when I woke up, I was laying on the ground and I thought either a bale of hay had fallen on me or one of the steers had gotten out and was on me because I couldn't get up. And that's when I saw the pitchfork. And um, it had landed flat on the ground and then I had landed crossways on it, making like an X. And so although I didn't impale myself, the wooden handle where it hit my um, T12 vertebrae, it just completely fractured it and it was a burst fracture and damaged my spinal cord. And so I realized right away that obviously something was wrong because I couldn't get up. And so I started yelling for help. And I was taken to the hospital there in Cody, Wyoming and stabilized there. And then they flew me by helicopter to Billings, Montana and I was there in Billings for several weeks before they flew me back to Indianapolis. At the very beginning, just simply leaving the house was a challenge because the, the little things that we take for granted um, when you're able-bodied, going down stairs, walking across streets that don't have curbs, just the physical challenges were very difficult for me because I'm, a, I'm an outdoor person. And so the outdoors became scary because it was inaccessible and I just wanted to stay inside where it was safe and I knew I could get around and things like that. And so a lot of it were just the physical challenges of just getting around in a world that's not accessible. And then a lot of it too is just emotional challenges that I faced myself. I was a fairly confident person before my accident. I didn't have the sports that I thought you know, were my identity. I didn't have you know, a boyfriend at 16 was such a big deal because um, guys just didn't know quite what to do with the, with the chair and things like that. And so that was also a big challenge that I had to overcome personally was just being confident in myself despite the chair to be able to, to go out and just be who I was and not let that slow me down at all. I, I had to learn how to drive all over again. Going back to high school, going to college, I went to graduate school, moved up to Wisconsin all by myself with my dog, tried to find an apartment that was accessible. That was a whole other challenge I didn't know anything about. Went to a small private campus that had never really had students in wheelchairs before, so learning all about that. Um, and like I said, you know, dating, getting married, having a baby, just all these life experiences that people take for granted is just happening. When you're in a wheelchair, there's just a whole other set of obstacles that you have to think through. And so I actually got into hunting originally to impress a boy, is what it came down to. And then it became more of um, meeting other people in wheelchairs there in Cody, Wyoming, that hunted, and they approached me to start a nonprofit called Wyoming Disabled Hunters, and I thought they wanted me to join me because I'm a computer nerd. So they wanted me to be the secretary and take notes and things like that. And I was like, yeah, that's fine. I want to get involved somehow here in, in Cody now that we live here. And very quickly found out that um, there aren't a lot of female hunters that are in wheelchairs. It just, they're really hard to find. And so kind of decided to see if I could, I could fit in that, um, that space that was lacking, especially there in Wyoming. And to be honest, at first, I, I didn't know if I'd be able to do it. I, I'm an animal lover, and so I thought, that'll be great to get outdoors and be close to animals, but am I going to be able to pull the trigger? Am I going to be able to shoot an animal? And then the more I thought about it, I, I appreciated the process of being in control of harvesting my own meat, um, knowing that it was organic, that I can pay a very inexpensive price to get a lot of meat. Um, it sounded like a great date night with my husband. I thought it doesn't get much better than that. And so the more I, I thought about all the pros as opposed to what I thought were the cons, I thought, well, I'll give it a try and see if I like it. And if I don't, then that's fine. I don't have to do it anymore. And from the first morning of being out there and hunting, I just completely fell in love with not only being that close to the animals, but the experience of 
being able to harvest my own meat, know how it was processed, know that the money that I spent to get that meat was going to go toward conservation efforts and things like that. And just the experience of um, the camaraderie that I had with other disabled hunters. And again, it was something that people didn't think that we could do. And so not only letting myself enjoy that opportunity, but being able to share that with lots of folks that didn't think that they could hunt either was a pretty amazing and rewarding experience. When I first heard about the pageant, I thought it was a joke, to be honest with you. I'm not a pageant person. I'm a huge tomboy outdoorsman, and I had all of the same stereotypes about pageants that I'm sure everyone else does. And I found out very quickly that the Miss Wheelchair USA pageant is not about outward beauty and outward appearance. It's all about empowering women with disabilities, giving them a national platform to talk about what's important to them, and then just building this family of women that are in wheelchairs. All of my friends that are in chairs are guys, which is fine, but it's nice every once in a while to have another girl that you can talk to that knows exactly what you're going through. And so a lot of my friends and family encouraged me to look more into it. And once I did that, I realized that it was going to give me this amazing opportunity to travel if I won and talk about um, disability related issues, talk about my platform, which was accessible outdoor recreation, which has always been important to me. And I thought, what better way to be able to share that with others as well as get to know other ladies in chairs. There was none of the drama that I had in my mind. It was just a lot of other ladies that just happen to be in wheelchairs that are making a difference in their community. And so learning about their stories and the challenges that they've overcome it was also nice to know I'm not the only one. I feel like that sometimes, that I, I'm the only girl in a wheelchair out there. And so it was nice to, to meet those other ladies and form those friendships. And then after winning, the opportunities that I've had just to travel around the country and share my story with people, talk about accessible outdoor recreation, talk about hunting and things like that, it's ended up being an amazing opportunity. I never thought a pageant would change my life, <laughs> but it did and it's something that I would do again in a heartbeat. Sometimes when I'm in a blind, I have to remind myself while I'm there because I just like to sit and enjoy watching the animals. And then after a couple days, I'm like, okay, we need meat in the freezer. I got to get my animal, you know, and I have to get back to what's important. <laughs> but I, I enjoy being so close to the animals. What I loved about my rifle hunt was that we, we called it extreme wheelchair hunting because for the first time, I was able to experience what I had heard my husband and other able-bodied friends talk about. And that was going up into the mountains, going out into these remote places and being able to hunt the animals in their you know, natural habitat. We all piled up in the, a Toyota Land Cruiser and we just took off up into the mountains. And over the next two days, they, they towed my chair with a rope on the front of it. They um, drug me, my husband carried me piggyback. I army crawled, I rolled down a few hills. I mean, it was the most extreme experience I've ever, I have the cactus still in my tires that I'm still pulling out to prove it. We'd unload and get you know, all the gear out and everything, get all set up and then the animals would run away and we'd load back up. But to me, that's what hunting was and that's what everyone else always talked about experiencing. One night we were able to just lay out and listen to the, the elk bugle. I'd never heard that before except on YouTube. <laughs> it's much better in the wild. And so just being able to experience all those things that I had heard other people talk about that I never thought I'd get to do. And then the next day, obviously, actually harvesting that big bull elk from about 540 yards was just amazing. But not only that, but knowing how hard all of those folks had worked to get that, as well as me physically, I know I've never worked that hard for anything in my entire life. And so that was really exciting to me that following this chain of awareness and education, finding out about this equipment, learning about this equipment that we could make adaptive and we could make work, and then seeing it come to fruition in a way that no one would have ever dreamed possible because I had a lot of selfless friends that were willing to haul me around and we had this adaptive equipment. And sometimes that's the only way you find out what your own limitations are is to push those. And that's exactly what I did and found out that I thought my breaking point was here and it actually, I never hit it. And so able to, to push past what I thought my own obstacles were that I had put in my head to find out that, like I said, with the right support and the right adaptive equipment, there's not anything that you can't do. Lundvall is part of a national inspirational tour with four other crown winners. You can follow Ashley's adventures on her YouTube channel, as well as her crown and camo blog. By the way, Ashley, congratulations on that antelope.